chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. It is a privilege to be acknowledged as and to be a son of God. Now, it is not clear to the naked eyes what our glorified bodies will look like, but we know that we shall look just like Jesus, and we are unable as of yet to see Jesus in his full glory due to the fleshly house or body that we now live in. But the day is coming when this mortal shall put on immortality, and when this occurs, we shall see him as he is. All right, verses 3 through 8. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgressed against the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinned not. Whosoever sinned had not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is the great incentive for living holy. Jesus, the King of Kings, is coming, and we shall be just like him. And everyone who has this hope becomes more and more like him each day. Then he shows the difference between believers and the unsaved, or the unbelievers. The believers do not practice sin, and the world does. Jesus says this to the religious leaders in John's Gospel 8 and verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and lusts of your father ye will do. It's just that simple. If your father is the devil, you will act like him. If the heavenly father is your father, you will act like him. Then he gives the good news. Jesus was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. All right. Verse number nine. Whosoever is born of God, do it not commit sin for his seed remained in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, John is simply saying again that everyone who is born of God does not practice sin. Why? Because we have the nature of God, which does not allow us to live continually in sin. John is not saying that a believer will never sin. He is just simply saying that the born again believer does not practice sin. Chapter two and verse one makes that very clear. All right. Let's look at verses 10 through 18. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in debt. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso had this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now, this is how to recognize believers and unbelievers. A believer practices righteousness and loves like God loves. The unbeliever practices sin and hate righteousness. Then he issued out some strong words. He says that, Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. He gives us an example of this. Abel was a believer, and Cain an unbeliever. Cain hated righteousness, and thus killed his brother Abel. Then he says, just like Jesus laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. In other words, we ought to love like God loves. We are not to love in word only, but in deed and in truth. We ought to be there for each other financially as well as spiritually. If a brother or sister is in need and you have the means to help them, by all means, help them. 
when you manifest your love toward a brother or sister, it is to be done in truth. Now, what does it mean to love in truth? Paul says this, let love be without dissimulation. In other words, let your love be without hypocrisy. We must love in action and not in word only, and it must be done in truth. In other words, be real with your love. All right. Verses 19 through 24. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and know it all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abided in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Listen, everything hinges on love. Now abides these three, faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these three is love. When we love like God loves, it is impossible for our heart to condemn us. And we have complete confidence when we come before the throne of God. When we love like God loves, we are in complete alignment to the will of God. When this takes place, whatever we ask the Father, we will receive. Why? Because we are walking in his will. Anything we ask in accordance to his will, he hears and answers. Now, here are the two commandments that, if kept, will cause us to receive from God. Number one, believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Note the word in. Psalms 124 and verse 8 reads, our help is in the name of the Lord. It means that our help is in the love the mercy and power which have been revealed to us as the nature and character of God. It means to believe in the nature and character of Jesus Christ. And one of the things God is, is love. Number two, we must love one another with the same selfless, sacrificial, forgiving, look beyond all false love that Jesus loves us with. Our lives depend on the right belief and conduct. We cannot begin the Christian life until we accept Jesus Christ for what he is. We have not accepted him completely until our attitude toward others are the same as Jesus Christ's attitude is toward us. He who keeps these two commandments dwells in God and God in him. He goes on to say that God dwells in us by his spirit. Listen, if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The mark of of a child of God is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. 